And so Denver, why don't you go ahead and pull up Pronovos to be able to show the whip schedule within Pronovos? Because I really think it's the future of the whip schedule here. Yeah. And like you said, when, when you're trying to tie out to Excel sheets, you never know where that data is really coming from. If it's a data dump and there's a bunch of edits being done, I think the thing that we see a lot is there's a lot of human error that can happen when looking at WIP reports that aren't directly being generated out of the accounting system, right? So the beauty of Pronovos here is this will make a connection to your guys's ERP. It'll extract the data. It'll present it in meaningful ways. So there's no, you know, chance for human error when, when looking at it, because it's, it is the representation of the data. So when we're taking a look at the WIP here, we're going to see right from the accounting system, all of the jobs that we have for this company, right? We can see that our total contract amount, how much earned revenue we have. So what Chris is talking about based on percentage of completion versus what we've billed today. So you get a kind of a global snapshot. And then whether you guys are over or under build, um, what that number looks like in total uh, um, for all your jobs. Now, if you look down below, we're gonna see a list of each and every active job. So by default, all your active jobs, as long as you're managing those in your accounting system, you know, when they're marked as inactive or closed or anything like that, this will always be your up-to-date job list out of the system, right? So when you're looking at, you know, taking a look at one of these jobs here, we'll just focus on our first job here, this Chrysler building. We can see that we've got our contract amount of 5.1 million. We've got a revised budget of 4.2 million. We've got this third column here, this projected final cost. So this is a tool that we've developed to you know, integrate with the WIP so that the project managers or, you know, office personnel, whomever is going to be managing the WIP has the opportunity to forecast their jobs. Um, and there's two ways that you can do that. You can either do that at a global, you know, just at the job level. I want to just plug in a number here, right? So for example, if I wanted to click on this $3.1 million, maybe that's just wrong. We, we miskeyed something. Maybe it should have been 4.1 instead of 3.1, right? So I can click on this number here. It'll open up a flyout window with you know all the information here, all the time we've done any edits to this um, projected final cost number for this job. But let's just say, yeah, we we fat fingered it. We want to type in four point one million dollars, and we're gonna change it as of today. And you do have the option to pick a day, right? So if if I was running this for March and I wanted to go back and make that adjustment into March, I could go back update it there and, and uh, update the whip, but let's just do it as of today, just to not get confused here. So $4.1 million as of today, we can go ahead and update the whip. All right, before I click that, just before I leave the screen, as you see down here, we've got all of our prior adjustments. Um, if I really wanted to click and see all the times we've edited this job, um, you'll see a, a running total of everything. And then down below, um, I we, we feel that this root cause breakdown is a very powerful tool for contractors. And not only are we able to make these adjustments, hey, it's 4.1 or hey, it's 3.7, whatever. When, I, when we get into the actual projected final cost tool, we'll get into where these are being assigned and how these are going to impact, you know, maybe your decision um, when, when looking at these jobs moving forward. So this will give us an aggregate total of all the reasons why we're doing well, right, on a job or why the job may be uh, performing not up to standards, right? So whether it's a scope gap, whether it's bad production rates, whatever it may be, you guys can start tagging these reasons for your jobs. And, and once again, with, with anything like this, you know, we try to tell everyone it's not so much a, uh, a tattletale kind of thing. It's more of insight. Right. So you guys can make those um, proactive decisions when you have similar jobs in the future. Hey, you know, every time we do a, you know, a government job or a school job, whatever it is, we tend to, you know, our, our production rates are a little bit slower than what we'd like to see it. So maybe on those estimates going forward, we we account for that ahead of time. So it's just something that I think we don't see many, if any, other programs out there that are able to track this kind of detail to it. So let's um, let's get into it. So we'll, we'll save our cost here and we'll update the whip. Okay, so as we'll see, 
that'll update our WIP. We had $3.1 million in there. It's now at $4.1 million. Um, but this, it just like what Chris was mentioning in his, uh, in his slides, when we're looking at that projected profit margin or we're looking at the percent complete, these numbers are getting edited because we are updating that projected final cost. So the way that this WIP will look at it is it'll take that cost to date compared against the projected final cost number to give us that percent complete, right? Which will then in turn edit our earned revenue. And then in, finally, it'll um, affect those over and under billing values as well. Yep, so in this example that he just gave, he actually increased the projected final costs. So he's increasing the denominator, which makes your percentage completion go down, which means that you're gonna recognize less earned revenue and your overbillings are gonna go up. So if you look at the top part of the screen that he showed originally, that over under billings number went up. Yep. So we've, this, this does, you know, affect it right away. So like, you know, as you guys are making these edits, you'll see the um, results of these um, kicking in immediately. So when we're looking at um, something like this, if we want to get into more of a detailed look at the projected final cost, right? Um, maybe I, you know, it's impactful to change this for bottom line numbers, but, you know, the, the tool that we really like showcasing is the projected final cost, which is what we would see, you know, project managers or office managers, someone is coming in here to do the forecasting for the job. So, you know, Chris, in your experiences too, you know, WIPs being done in Excel, I'm sure we're seeing the same thing, you know, on the forecasting side of it, you know, a lot of people don't want, you know, their PMs are just a lot of people in the accounting system. So I think having a tool like this um, is pretty awesome too. Well, I think a lot of times you have project managers who are notorious for having estimates that are either really conservative or really aggressive. And you don't necessarily want to mess with your project manager's estimate within the, you know, whatever program you're using. But that's why a lot of people use Excel so that they can update that estimate outside of what the project manager sees potentially to really adjust that estimate so that you're recognizing a, you know, more reasonable amount of revenue because we just saw how much that impacts the financial statements. So having the ability to come in here and make some of those adjustments, I think is really valuable. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a good point too, is like, as you're going through this, so let's just say we get down to you know, rough plumbing and we want to edit the labor. We'll say that um, if we click into it, we're going to see a flyout window of, you know, the production rates, the costs, the hours, you know, all the things that um, you guys are able to manipulate, you know, when it comes to forecasting. So if you wanted to just simply change the percent complete, if you wanted to change the, um, the projected final hours, if you want to change the projected final cost, whichever way it makes the most sense for each contractor, given, you know, maybe we're tracking quantities, you know, uh, feet of pipe we're installing or, you know, cubic yards of concrete we're pouring, whatever it may be, um, that can also be tracked in here as well. So when we're looking at costs, we'll just make a simple adjustment here. If we go into the cost, we've got a projected final cost of $2,500. Um, and we've got $384, but let's just say in this scenario, we want to um, showcase that we're going to save some money here, right? So we're going to take this number. We're going to say, we're going to save, you know, $2,200 is our new projected final cost. Okay. So for the labor, um, what this does, and this is where those reasons and um, for the adjustment come in, you'll be able to click, Hey, you know, why are we saving money? You know, it's great. We're saving money, but you know, why are we, why are, what's the reason for it? That way you guys can, can look back on all of your adjustments later on and see, you know, where we did well in the job. So we can just say for this one, we had fast production rates, um, you know, type in any sort of comments that you guys want. And this is what's going to give you that historical data um, when you're looking at all of your jobs or for this job in particular on why you guys are saving money, right? So if I go ahead and confirm that, That'll give us a new prior adjustment, right? We'll be able to go down the list, look at uh, all the reasons why we saved money. And, um, you know, it's just, I, I think this is the, the coolest thing because if you take it one step further, 
right? We go through, we make all of our adjustments to each one of our cost codes, cost classes. Um, once you're done with the forecasting portion of it, you'll be able to scroll up to the top here and we'll see we've got 2.7 for um, you know, projected final cost here. So the little exclamation point to the right of it, and Chris kind of called this out before, is where this is an indicator that the projected final cost on this screen here is not matching the projected final cost that's on the WIP report. So why is that important? Because if we're having you know conflicting data or even just, you know, hey, we we've updated it and you know now we want to push this value to the WIP report. Um, this is your your you can click right into it. It'll say, hey, you know, your WIP report we typed in our $4.1 million earlier, you know, doesn't match to what we have in total here. So let's just say that this number here is our projected final cost. So we can go in there, we can type in that value. We can say, yep, as of today. Now you can type in any number you wanted to, right? We could have typed 2.8, 3.1, 4.0. Um, in those scenarios where the project managers are, or whomever, yeah, we're sandbagging a little bit. Maybe we want to type in a slightly inflated or deflated value in here. Um, this will push it to the whip and it'll make those adjustments just like we saw before on the percent complete um, for that job. So if we go ahead and push this value to the whip, right? Now, if I refresh the page just to show that um, that value is now going to be matching the whip, we'll go see exclamation points gone. We'll go back to the whip. We'll refresh this one and we'll see that that value, that 4.1, um, it might be a date. This will update to our projected final cost. It'll update our percent complete and then, you know, affect our over and under calculation, right? So I think this is the one tool that, um, is able to kind of be your your one plus one equals three. If you had to go with some cliche saying here is that you, know, you have the tool that connects directly to the accounting system. You're able to pull all of your jobs, the whip schedules, the forecasting tools, have it be that one-stop shop because we all know that in any job, right? The make or break is always the labor on the job. And I think what some people um, kind of underestimate is you know how much time we're spending in the office just doing I don't want to say trivial stuff, but, you know, preparing job reports and doing monthly projections and things of that nature. And, you know, if we're combining a whole bunch of spreadsheets together to, to accomplish that, maybe, um, you know, you look at it differently and have this one-stop place where everyone can do all of their adjustments um, and, and look at the insight all in one spot, right? Um, Chris, yeah, I'm trying, you think I, this sorry, would say, oh, sorry. I was going to say, finish your comment, and then I want to make two comments about the whip schedule. Okay. I was, well, I was going to ask you, how much, uh, how much extra time do you think that you've seen uh, people spending, you know, spinning their wheels in Excel? <laughs> I mean, so what I typically see is just what's at the end of the year, right? And a lot of times our clients are relying on us to take the whip schedule that they've dumped out of their software and with a lot of job to date information and relying on us to try and reconcile it current year and prior year costs and revenues so that we can tie it back to the financial statement. So obviously that's a more expensive option because it's being done at our rates as, as opposed to internal rates. But on top of that, I mean, hopefully, you know, the, the best of the best contractors are having monthly meetings with their project managers. And so, you know, though it can take a, a controller or CFO hours to put together good, useful information before that meeting to even come to that meeting prepared to go, to walk through with their project manager. Hey, where's this job stand? And same for the project manager standpoint. And a lot of times that's done in Excel or PDFs and then updates are made after that meeting as opposed to be able to come right into here and make those updates. And I just, I'd had a, a recent contractor I was going, showing ProNovos. And one of the things they were most excited about is, you know, a lot of times they sit down in those monthly meetings with their project managers and you're just looking at tons and tons of data out of the accounting system. That's not necessarily in a pretty format. And you know, even though project managers are dealing with a lot of numbers and they're, you know, they don't want to be called accountants in a lot of ways, they're accountants that they operate better a lot of times when they're able to see charts and graphs and things that are pro novos as opposed to just reports straight out of an accounting system that aren't necessarily made uh, to be gone over, you know, with a project manager on a monthly basis. So 
So, so that's one piece. The, the thing that I did want to mention as well, just, you know, while, while Denver has the uh, whip pulled up here, two things. So first of all, there's a lot of columns here, right? So I think as someone who's not as familiar with the whip, you see all these columns and whether it's internally or just looking at this, it can be overwhelming. So the first thing I would tell you is focus on the four things that we had to use to calculate everything that we calculated before. Okay. So that, that's the contract amount. Okay. So that's the very first column there. That's the estimated costs complete. So that's that projected final cost column, the third column. That's your job cost to date. So what, one, two, three, four, five, six columns in. Yeah, thank you, Denver. And then your build to date number, which is a couple columns over from there. Okay. Those four columns are driving every single thing in this entire web schedule. Okay. So I know it seems like a lot of dorky math and accounting. But if you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide, I promise you, you can, you know, take over and, and handle a whip schedule and understand it. It's just, to me, it helps to highlight those columns within your whip schedule when you, when you first start looking at it to be able to kind of separate what's a calculation versus what are my inputs. Um, and the last thing I wanted to say on the whip schedule here, just to make sure that you guys see it, is I talk a lot about my contractor's whip schedules when I get them or just job to data information. Pronovos does a really nice job. They have columns. If you scroll to the right, Denver, it takes not only your, your job to date information, but it also pulls in prior year cost. It pulls in prior year revenues so that you can get just current year revenues and just current year costs to tie back to your income statement. And that can save hours and hours and thousands of dollar, dollars. I don't think clients a lot of times even know how long it, understand how long it takes to try and tie back to that. Because again, if it's an Excel, it's not pulling from your system. So maybe not all the jobs are there. Maybe you're, you know, you're missing a few. The, the job schedules need to not only include just in-process jobs, but also jobs that were completed during the year. So a lot of times I'll get a job schedule from a client that's only jobs that are in process at the end of the year. Well, if there's any revenues earned or costs incurred on jobs that were completed in the year, you're not going to be able to tie back to your current year income statement. So Denver, show them real quick too how you can kind of set dates to pull in like completed jobs. Yep. So if you guys are wanting to include, you know, our active jobs, but also maybe we've had some jobs that are closed recently that we want to make sure still exist on the whip schedule. So what you can do is you can include the closed jobs in there and right out of the gate, it's going to show us active and closed and it's going to give us a, a pretty long list. But what you can do as well in the filters is you can um, pull up a close date and say, I only want to show jobs you know, that have been closed in the current period. So let's just say up until the end of March. So all of our active jobs and then closed jobs, you know, that are closed this year. So if we scroll through here, we'll be able to see um, maybe towards the bottom of the list, there's some closed jobs in here that, um, you know, will need to show up on there as well. Yep. yep. Anything that says 100% complete and that percent complete column. Right. Yep. yep. So it's a, it's a nifty tool that, you know, not only, you know, you guys can still manage those jobs in the accounting system to close them when they've been closed. And then you can pick and choose when these um, different kind of jobs are going to show up on the WIP schedule or not. And okay. we talked a little bit about the WIP and the projections. And um, if you want to take it one step further and kind of start looking at you know, company-wide information. We've got the WIP here, great. You know, we've got our percentage of completions, our revenue to date, um, over under billing totals. But, you know, when we were looking at the projections and making those adjustments to it, you know, what are some of those reasons? And this is, I think, the, the long-term goal of the projected final cost, if you guys are making all these adjustments in here, is to get this projected final cost root cause analysis. I know it's a mouthful, but, uh, it's got a lot of great information in here as far as, you know, once again, company-wide, what are the, the biggest reasons we see we've got 11 times we've had a negotiated buyout that's saving us, you know, close to hundred grand in total, right? And then if we scroll down to the reasons why we're losing money, we keep running into scope gaps and it's, it's costing us quite a bit of money. So as you're looking through this, you'll be able to, you know, see job by job, what are all the reasons, you know, a job is you know, in the plus or the minus, but the insight that you have here is, is just awesome. Right. And as we go through, if you want to pick a single job and just, you know, I, I know this can be a little bit 
you know, kind of a lot to look at. But if you go over here, we can click, you know, on our Chrysler building job right in the bar graph, and it'll just summarize it all, right? Here's all the reasons for saving money, all the reasons for losing money, um, and then a breakdown of you know, what were the cost codes that were impacted, what were the, the total projected final cost adjustments. Um, and as we go through here, you would just be able to see all of those different changes that have been made in here. And that's why I think just from a, a best of the best contractor standpoint, it's good to have these meetings on a monthly basis rather than just at the end of the job so that you actually have time to adjust and potentially get change orders or, or whatever, cost savings, whatever it is to actually be a little more proactive on jobs. Yeah, and once again, not, not meant to be a tattletale report. It's meant to give you guys the information that you guys are looking for out of all of your projects. If we're constantly running into something, I think we'd rather know ahead of time, you know, these are the reasons we're typically going sideways and do everything in our powers to, uh, to avoid those kind of situations, right? Um, and if you're looking for a little bit more detail, um, you know, about a single pro project, you know, this one's kind of at a company level that kind of shows all those root cause analysis. Um, we do have our project dashboard that you'd be able to pick, you know, we'll stick with the same job here, contract amount, earned revenue versus bill to date. So once again, feeding into that, you know, what our over and under calculation is for the job, but, um, being able to see all of those budget adjustments, pluses and minuses. Um, and I think, and, uh, we've, we've gotten a lot of awesome feedback about this project financial timeline. It's one thing to see all the numbers on the screen. Hey, I, I see that my cost is here and I see my bill today is here. We must be, we must be in the, the positive. Well, the, the extra kicker here is this will actually show what you built, how much money you guys have received and then what your costs are month by month. So as you would expect in the earlier stage of the job, you got to spend the money to get the job going. And then as we start billing, you know, based on the, percentage of completion, we're going to start receiving money. And then you'll see kind of where that break even point, you know, roughly in October for this job that, Hey, we're actually bringing in the money, right? We're receiving money on the job rather than just spending it out of our own pocket. So I think it's just a cool, some, some of our project managers at some of our clients offices have coined this the money graph. So, you know, being able to see this information at a, at a macro level, I think it's just super convenient and, you know, always complex isn't, always better. So um, a simple chart like this is just, I think, very impactful. Right. And if we keep going down a little bit further, you've got all your monthly activity for costs and labor hours. And um, then at the bottom, I'm keeping a, a tally of all of your change orders, RFIs, snows, all the, you know, different types of documents you guys are wanting to track on the, on the project as well. So I would say from a workflow standpoint, you know, when you take it from the whip, take it to the projected final cost tool and you kind of see your end result here of all the reporting capabilities you guys have. Um, I think it's just going to save everyone a bunch of time when, when you get into those job meetings, you know, you want to make sure you have all the information readily available. If someone says, Hey, why, you know, why is this job going sideways? Well, you've got all the tools in your, in your belt to say, Hey, you know, these are exactly the reasons why um, we're at where we're at. So I think it's also really helpful as a CFO or a business owner who doesn't have time to get into the job job weeds on a day-to-day -day basis to be able to get into a, a system like this and see snapshots of things, dashboards, to be able to manage a business from a high level rather than having to get in and run 20 different reports of an accounting software and you know have those conversations. So yeah. I think this is a really good dashboard, especially for those monthly meetings. 